Yun nga, yung sinasabi kanina ni Pere, si Matipot Sento. Actually, I'll tell you naman the story about that. No? Sa, uh, sa massacre. Kaya, the army, when it happened, the army was saying, uh, imposible hindi nila alam. Because, I was with a photographer, we were covering Arido. There's blood fields in Plan Wars. We were covering one of them in Nabindanao, two weeks before the massacre happened. So, the massacre was on a Monday. It happened on a Monday. Friday, we were at uh, Awang Airport in Cotabato. We were waiting for a flight to Manila. Someone comes up to us, someone, you know, a very reliable uh, source, who says, there's this Mamuda Dato who wants to run against the Ampatuans. Siyempre, ding, 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 ding. Ampatuan yun. Who'll they run against an Ampatuan? Then he said, the Ampatuans are spreading the word, tatag ka rin daw nila. But you know, it's a big story. So me and my partner, ano, we schedule rebook ulit tayo. But we've spent two weeks in the mountains, so we were kind of really tired. I was coming down with the fever. In fact, it turned into the flu later. Siya, masama na rin pagkaramdam niya. Kaya namin, di ba, libok? Piling pa lang naman. Balikan na lang natin pag nagkaputo ka na. Because that was what we were expecting. Like two warlords getting into a scrap, babarangin na, mayroon. Yan, umuwi kami. Then the first thing Monday, around 9 a.m., yun na lang naman. We got text from convoy missing. I thought at first, ah, nahito lang yan. Kasi like, about a couple of months before that, we were covering the evacuations in Mabindano. There was like 50 journalists, hininto naman kami ng army. We were actually stopped at a checkpoint for more than an hour. Nung tinatanong namin yung army, bakit? Order ni General, bakit? Eh, media daw, hininto yun. Bakit nga ba? Wala, di namin alam, basta order. And later, they compounded this tall tale of... They found IDEs, improvised IDEs, uh, IEDs, no? may bomba daw doon sa... No? Eh kung may bomba, ba't yung iba pinapa, pinapadaan yun? Mas magagawa kami yung iskaya sa kanila. No? Eventually, they let us leave, but that should have, you know, that should have, uh, on hindsight, that should have uh, forewarned us. No? Eh, we're so used to the press card being sort of, you know, parang pasis na kung saan saan. And then, during that period, it wasn't so anymore. Things had changed. It wasn't that respected anymore. So yeah, not, at first we thought it was just yun, hinaran lang. Two hours later, yun na yung mga balitang all dead. So, I was really, uh, uh, well, you have to be affected by it. Okay? Kahit hindi ako, not, eh, almost everyone. And imagine in the Jensen, uh, Jensen Tapurong area, General area, Sultan Kudarat and Jensen. The 32 journalists. Also Coronada. Coronada. Uh, it actually, uh, the loss of lives were uh, actually comprised about half of the total media community. So napakalagin yung, it was a major loss talaga. So not just to your families, to the colleagues, to the community. And I don't think they've even started to recover yet. In fact, right now, Jensen is officially the city where the most journalists have been going. So, yeah. I know it's not a rosy picture, but it's the reality we face back home. And, uh, so, any questions? I'd be glad to answer. Try to answer them. Marami ang mga words sa definition of impunity. Can you explain it first? Yeah, well, impunity, yung nga sinasabi, there actually is no government policy to kill us, to kill journalists. There is no official government policy we do not believe that. However, there has also been no government action. There has been practically no government action on the killings. So, you know, what we're saying is inaction is actually tacit approval because you let everyone go free. It will embolden those who want to kill you. So, you know, makakalusok naman eh. Ang nagda nabito. So, for every case that remains unsolved, it emboldens someone else. Uh, I can get away with it. 
And it's not, it's not just about media. It's related to the whole, to the whole picture, to the whole ano, uh, situation of extrajudicial killings. In the case of activists and other dissenters, of course, it's official policy. It's basically official policy, even if government will not admit it. It's official policy. So if government does not act on the killings of activists, eventually people will start thinking, well, it might be okay to kill a journalist. And then no one acts on the killing of a journalist, then more journalists are killed. And then they're killing lawyers, they start killing judges, they start killing priests. So it's all interrelated. And that creates impunity. Lately, uh, consider last year, the murder of Jerry Ortega. It was a major, no, major case, uh, Palawan. It was an environmentalist and a broadcaster. Well, he was also a politician. But he was basically a broadcaster. So he was murdered. The gunman was immediately arrested. He pointed to the members of the hit team. And they all pointed to former governor, Joel Reyes. So Joel Reyes, his brother, Mario, who is mayor of Toron, and his, uh, I think, three or four very close aides. At first, DOJ dropped the charges against them. Tuloy yung sa hit team, yung sa hit team, tuloy yung charges, sa alleged mastermind dropped. So we protested, the family persisted. Laila Dilima, who had initially inhibited herself because she was, in fairness naman, she had been an election lawyer of Joel Reyes. But she ordered a reinvestigation. So the second panel said, indict them. So they were indicted. The court issued a warrant. As soon as the court issued a warrant, what happens? Interior Secretary Jesse Rubredo says, we'll give it till the end of the week to surrender. A warrant na yun eh. Warrant na yun. Huhuliin mo na. Let's give it till the end of the week to surrender. The next day, Malacan yan, through Edwin Lacerda, the spokesman, says, I will give him until the end of the week to surrender. Why? In deference to his position as former governor. <laughs> Did they give the same deference to the former president? So why the double standards? And of course, after the week was over, the Reyes brothers were nowhere to be found. Hanggang ngayon. They're nowhere to be found. So yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's the kind of governance, it's the kind of governance that creates impunity, that lets people actually believe. Like, let the patrons actually believe they could get away with killing 58 people and be called into account. So. I was just wondering, um, ano kaya sa tingin mo ang mindset ni Pinoy? Like his own family experienced the, uh, the abuses during the martial law regime. And now he's at a chance. He's the president. Why? 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 Look at his legislative record. He has brought nothing about the dictator. Where was he when we were fighting the dictator? In fairness to Chris Aquino, she was standing on stage at seven years old. Noy Noy was never to be found anywhere during that period. I think the only time Noy Noy actually became visible was during the coup when he was wounded. And uh, honestly, Sino yun is just a product of his mother's son. If, if, if Corey hadn't died, I don't think he'd be present right now. And he simply doesn't care, really. He doesn't care. It's all, wala, puro angas lang siya. And one thing is, lately he's been taking to, like, every time something goes wrong, he bashes me again. Well, all presidents do that. But I think he's been doing it most regularly. I mean, it's like, magti three years pa lang siya. Is bash media publicly at least ten times, which also actually helps encourage those who want to silence the press. Because you send the signal, I don't like media; you can do whatever you want with them, even if you don't say so often. And of all the presidents, we've, we've actually there's a problem. Eh? We've asked this from 
Y demanda de ese programa, esa estrada, arroyo, aquí, ¿no? Sabi nga namin eh, okay, kahit sabihin na natin siyang democracy ito, ba't yun ang democracy? In any government, leadership still counts. Even symbolic leadership counts. So all we're asking is, give the unequivocal order, stop the killing, solve the cases, get whoever is responsible. Not one president has ever been in the world. Not one, not a single one. Not even, you know. Maybe this is a more or less a follow-up to Enrique's question. First of all, maraming salamat sa yung paglalahan mo. Uh, maraming, uh, maraming akong uh, natutuhan. Especially yung, yung systemic analysis ng uh, media ownership, yung structure ng media ownership. At saka yung katawag mong working class. I think uh, we can go much deeper into those uh, themes. Uh, I was also thinking, uh, total na sa North America today, kung pwede natin iugnay yung uh, struggle for press freedom and human rights to the uh, global struggle that is going on also here in North America. Um, among uh, uh, press people as well as uh, uh, workers. So I wonder what your comment would be kung ano yung mga global political and economic uh, forces that is driving the suppression of uh, press freedom and human rights. Uh, as we know, in other regions, Latin America, Africa, because of the economic interests of global corporations, at saka yung so-called national security interests ng, ng Estado, um, anong nakikita mo? kaugnayan ng uh, so-called neoliberal agenda at saka itong uh, attack on press freedom. And then secondly, bakit Mindanao? Bakit tuwan sa Mindanao yung ganung kaiting ang, ano, ang uh, suppression? Uh, okay. So first question, I may be very, very unqualified to answer. I'll just, I'll just venture a guess. Well, if you look at the trend in media, it's actually getting worse everywhere. Repression is on the rise. Right? For various reasons. But I also believe the ownership patterns that have been established lately, like you know, the monopolies, like Murdoch, which actually reflect interest but differ from what media should actually be doing. We've seen the dumbing down of the press. Right? Like entertainment gets more value than our news. Because the Philippines. Yung una mong ano, yung headline mo, major political developments, but your first click will show a traffic accident. Or a you know, chismis. Minsan yung newscast mo, lindok mo, chismis. So, somehow it shapes the news values of people also. And shaping the news values of people that way, eventually you make people ignorant. Which really gets into the agenda of a, a government that seeks to oppress or seeks to push interests other than the people's interests. Like in the Philippines, ngayon, liberalized na yung mining. Right? And uh, what do people care about mining? Pag tinanong mong ordinary yung tao, what do they care about mining? Wala. And they probably say, maganda nga, maraming trabaho. No? Because it's not getting enough. It's not getting enough coverage in media. Because media interests simply do not, you know, Nandun din eh. Okay, ito, off the record din eh. Sa amin lang, sino si Pangilinan, may ari ng Felix. You think we can bash mining that the car? Yeah, we do. Minsan, I, I, slip, in, I slip in some mining <coughs> issues sa uh, coverage namin. But can we really go all out eh? on the issue? If our owner is the owner of a major mining. <laughs> so it all ties up to that. Right now, the debate is, anong dapat gawin sa China? South China Sea issue. What people are missing is, it could be the opening for the return of more U.S. troops and probably even bases. Because Noy Noy has been openly asking them to come back, using China as uh, the pretext.